I'm not much of a knife guy, or I wasn't. Um, I had a case knife, uh, a nice buck knife, but I never really got into knives that much. My dad always carried one, and that was about it. And then my nephew, who is into knives, he showed me um, his Recon 1 with the um, why, uh, cable tie, or the ghetto wave, as they call it. The ghetto wave. And I was, I was blown away that he could open a knife like that. It's quicker than a switchblade. It was unbelievable. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco from the KnifeJunkie.com. And we have quite a show for you. We have an interview with Rob Penna of Snaggletooth Tactical LLC. You've heard me mention that a number of times here on the podcast. Repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have to tell a little story on you, Bob. It seems like for I don't know how long, ever since we really started talking about knives uh, together and, and even talking about doing this podcast, you've been talking about this snaggle tooth thing with me. So I'm definitely looking forward to this interview to learn more about snaggle tooth and what exactly this thing is. Oh, well, you know, it's a great American innovation making knife owning even more of a pleasure, Jim. Even more of a pleasure. Before we get into that interview, I want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Again, that address is audibletrial.com slash knife junkie. Ever start looking for your next knife purchase before your last purchase has even arrived? Then you're probably a knife junkie. I'm speaking with Rob Penna, a tool and die maker from New Jersey, and the man behind the Snaggletooth MF, a popular add-on wave mod that can be attached to most folders with removable thumb studs. Draw your knife and the Snaggletooth MF snags your pocket seam and cams the blade open. I carry Rob's product daily on the pink cold steel broken skull I keep wedged in my waistband just in case. Snaggletooth Tactical is a great American small business serving the knife world and I'm pleased it brings Rob Penna to the Knife Junkie podcast. Rob, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. So uh, to break the ice here on the Knife Junkie podcast, I always ask people for a pocket check. What do you, what knife are you carrying today? Well, today I have my, uh, Cold Steel American Lawman, which, uh, is probably my favorite EDC because it's, uh, nice and slim, fits in the pocket and doesn't really, uh, you don't even know it's there. And it's super strong. It's got the strongest lock in the industry. At least that's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. Um, I haven't had to test it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fortunately, neither have I. So uh, let me ask you, is there anything special about your uh, American lawman? Anything uh, Anything special you've done to it, maybe uh, aftermarket? Well, aside from the snaggle tooth, no. <laughs> oh, well, that's what, I was, that's what I was very subtly getting at. So, uh, so today I'm carrying a, uh, I've got a, uh, the brand new number six, uh, Pemberton, um, Great Eastern Cutlery little slip joint that is tiny that I love. This is like something, uh, something you wear in your, in your vest pocket when you're an older man with a suit, but I, I like it anyway. Uh, I've got a, uh, Hinderer XM18 I carried in my right pocket with a, uh, with an aftermarket custom scale from another great American company called RC Bladeworks. They make custom scales for knives. And then, as per usual in my waistband, I have the ultra thin and handy cold steel broken skull. Mine is pink for cognitive dissonance. And on it, I have the Snaggletooth MF. Uh, because the whole nature of this knife hiding in my waistband is so that I can pull it out if I, if I'm on the ground in Baltimore getting kicked by a group of people, I can just pull this thing out and having the Snaggletooth MF on it, uh, wave it right out and I can start cutting ankles without, without a pause. <laughs> so, uh, that of course is a little bit tongue in cheek, but I just, I just wanted to say, uh, Rob, I, I love your product and, uh, and thanks for uh, bringing it. Uh, what's your background uh, as a tool and die maker and what industry are you from originally? Um, actually originally my, uh, my father had children for slave labor and <laughs> he used to make us work in his, in the basement, uh, 
turning handles on a lathe and a milling machine, making uh, actually magic tricks for a magician in the city. Oh, no kidding. That's where we started. I was like 13. So uh, what kind of magic tricks were you making? Huh? Um, it was, you know, um, it was uh, like um, appearing canes, a lot of higher end um, up close, like, you know, balls falling through screws, appearing quarters. It was a uh, very interesting work. All, you know, it's all with like reverse threads. It was pretty cool engineered products. Right. You say up close. I, I, I'm not too familiar with magic, but I do know that up, up close magic is a whole uh, genre where, where people are paying, uh, you know, as the name belies, very, very close attention to what you're doing. So I would imagine your manufacturing of, of whatever these products were had to be, had to be super tight so that people couldn't notice. Yeah. It was just, it was in the way you polish stuff or sand uh, a screw so you couldn't see a seam, but actually there would be a reverse thread. It would open up and then a ball could drop through it. Um, it was pretty interesting, but at that time, you know, I was 13, 14 years old. I, I wasn't no part of it. <laughs> you were just, uh, you were just the slave labor, as you said. Yes. That, that's quite a niche market your father found his way into. Yeah. It was interesting. And, uh, and you're on this show for something very niche, actually. I mean, I mean, the Snaggletooth MF is a very particular product, you know, out there for a very particular purpose. And, uh, it seems to have taken off. I mean, I, I'm not the, uh, I'm not the most in touch guy out there and I've been, uh, you know, hip to this product for, I think over a year now. Um, tell me a little bit about the genesis of it and, you know, how it came about and what the public response has been so far. Well, I'm not much of a knife guy or I wasn't. Um, I had a case knife, uh, a nice buck knife, but I never really got into knives that much. My dad always carried one and that was about it. And then my nephew, who is into knives, he showed me um, his Recon 1 with the um, why, uh, cable tie or the ghetto wave, as they call it. The ghetto wave. And I was I was blown away that he could open a knife like that. It's quicker than a switchblade. It was unbelievable. Let me interrupt you right here. Uh, yeah. Just uh, for anyone listening, the, the cable tie mod, you unscrew the uh, the thumb stud, remove that, and put a cable tie through it and zip it real tight and clip off the end. And when you pull it out of your pocket, it acts like a wave. It opens up your blade. So he shows you this, and it was a revelation. Yeah, I just I, you know, I was blown away by it. So um, he asked me, can we make a part that we could mount on knives and, uh, you know, have a finished product, not, not a, uh, way, um, not a wire tie. So, uh, I got to work, started designing it, uh, machined a couple of prototypes till we got, I mean, the height right, the angle right, the look right. And then we decided to, uh, make an injection mold because that was my tool and die background was injection molding. Tell me a little bit about that, the prototyping process. So he, he comes to you with the idea. Did he show you the Emerson wave or, or how well, cold steel does it with that thumb plate or? No, I, I just went online and did my own research and, mm -hmm. um, I saw the wave on the Emerson and I'm like, all right, that's a pretty simple, uh, design. And I read a story of how they came about with the Navy steels, Navy seals is pretty amazing story. And, um, so I just started designing it. Um, we try to stay away from his exact look. Uh, he does have a trademark. So we're trying to have some, you know, separation from that. We don't use the word wave. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we use pocket deployment and, uh, we made some prototypes in acrylic. He, uh, he would test them out every day, just keep pulling them out, pulling them out. And it worked great. At the beginning, we, you know, it was a little bit too big and didn't look right. And, I said, we, you know, we got to get sleeker, you know, because some of the knives are a little bit smaller. And, you know, we finally, like I said, we finally got the right combination of design and function. Well, you know, uh, the, uh, it, it, it also has a secondary, uh, function, uh, as a, a thumb ramp or a thumb stop. My, um, Cold Steel is very good with their handle designs in creating, um, uh, contoured handles and, and sort of, uh, integrated, um, finger guards so that if you thrust into something, your hands aren't going to uh, slide up onto the blade. But knives like the Cold Steel Broken Skull, the one that I carry all the time, it's a lot sleeker. It's thinner, and it also does not have a uh, sort of integrated guard in the handle. So actually having the Snaggletooth MF on this blade not only uh, aids in deploying it quicker, but having that thumb ramp there, and it's a pretty abrupt 
uh, rise off of the top of the blade. It is, you know, if I, if I gird my thumb against the, uh, you know, the back of that thing, my hand is not going to slide up. It, it, you know, I've tried it thrusting against trees and, and such, uh, you know, in my super tactical lifestyle. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but really it's, it's, uh, it performs that second function of stopping your hand from running up on the blade and it's a welcome addition. Yeah. Um, that was one of the great surprises being I wasn't a knife guy. Uh, I started seeing people commenting how they loved the way it, uh, acted as a thumb ramp. It gave them a lot more support and, uh, it was an added bonus. A lot of guys want me to make a version with some jimping on the back. <laughs> of course. Which is definitely something very doable. I just, you know, we could, uh, offer two versions, smooth or jimped. Um, I have other products I want to get out first. And, you know, unfortunately I have a day job. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I have a recommendation for those people who want jimping. First of all, uh, Rob, you should know this about the knife world. If you're going to continue to, to remain a denizen of it, people love their jimping and it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a polarizing topic. Uh, is this jimping sharp enough? Is it intentional jimping? Is it just indexing? Uh, but you know, if you really want jimping on the back of your acrylic MF, there's nothing stopping you from getting a little triangular file and, giving yourself a couple of grooves well actually it's um this is the materials delrin the prototypes for acrylic delrin. but they can actually if, if they take a, a soldering iron they could probably melt little jimping on the back of it if they wanted to and there is guys who sell um stippling for handguns oh right for attachments and they could put on their soldering iron and they could give themselves textures if they want it's pretty interesting it's a whole new world to me and it's amazing how much is really out there that i had no idea about Sure, sure. You you step into a you step into a a realm of enthusiasm, and and it it becomes a very deep hole, you know. See, yeah. someone someone's meant, you probably didn't even know what jimping was until you made this product. No and, clue. And, and now you know there are many varieties. <laughs> I didn't know tanto blades, axis locks, triads. Um, it, it I never carried a knife really. Now every day, um, I become a knife uh, aficionado. Well, okay. So uh, let me back up a little bit. Once you had the idea and when, once your nephew brought this to you and you thought this is a viable idea, how, how did you decide that there was market enough for it for you to move ahead and actually go into production? Uh, I started looking into uh, reading all different forms, knife forms, blade forms, cold steel head forms, and just reading what people wrote. And there's so many people out there doing the wave with the cable tie or some guys use electrical terminals, but there was no commercial um, solution. So I said, you know what? I'm a tool maker. I have access to all the machines. I have friends in the molding industry. It really wouldn't be a, an enormous startup cost for me because I could do everything myself. You know, the computer design, the programming. So I said, all right, let's do it. Let's, you know, invest, you know, several thousands of dollars and let's just do it and try to market it. And so far, it's slow, but it's slowly building, you know, just over a year that we uh, actually began selling on the website. And uh, it's good. From my perspective, you haven't gone away. You've only become more uh, visible yes. uh, as a, as a you know, I, someone who's on Instagram all the time and on YouTube all the time. I, I'm just seeing more and more of you. Um, so tell me a little bit about uh, going from the prototype process like once once you started to zero in exactly on your design and the material delrin which is used in a lot of case knives uh, mm -hmm. incidentally and the handles tell me a little bit about that process going from prototype to full production well the first step was to design injection mold so we had our design for the part now at the design injection mold so being i come from that background is pretty simple for me to do do a layout um you know it's just aluminum mold uh, cut cavities and cores, you know, there's, uh, there's a whole, you know, there's ejection systems, cooling systems in the injection molds. Once all that's in place, then I, uh, I go to someone who has injection molding machines, a facility, uh, which I know several guys, uh, they load into machine and how it works is pretty much it's, uh, you put in plastic pellets in, it melts it, forces it into a mold at 2000 PSI and you got yourself parts. It That's opens cool. up, it ejects, and uh, then I snip them and separate the lefties from the righties and start making kits up. 
So, so you pick up the parts from the place uh, that, mm-hmm. that does the injection molding. Do you bring this home? Do you do this on your kitchen table? Do it on my kitchen table. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I'm a sucker for these kind of stories. You know, a lot, a lot of the companies that are big now in the knife world, Emerson, Spider Co., uh, they started as, as kitchen table ventures, you know, and, uh, and grew from there. And to me, that's inspiring because, uh, you know, someday I would like to, embark on the same kind of thing. I'm a, I'm a novice knife maker in my spare time. And one day I would love for that passion to, to take off. So it's inspiring to see stories like yours, where you just, uh, you're just doing it at home and you're just making it work. So uh, tell me about the marketing aspect of it. Is it, how valuable has social media been for you? It's pretty much our Instagram has been pretty much my sole marketing tool. Uh, I know there's been guys who have uh, mentioned it on, I believe it's Blade Forums. And actually, I've been meaning to join because it looks like it's a great community and I should um, support it. So we have a little extra cash right now. So we're probably going to spend a little bit of money there. Um, once we're there, then we can advertise on the Blade Forums. And just so many different manufacturer pages that we could actually... Uh, you know, just hijack, I guess, <laughs> get in there and put post pictures up. So that's probably our next marketing venture. Uh, Instagram being, a, I'm a CNC machinist. A lot of times I'm running two machines are running by themselves after I program them. So I just, at, during work, my boss is cool. I just hop on the phone and I just search and, uh, you know, leave comments and hopefully some people respond and some people buy. And for the most part, it's been, uh, I would say it's like 98% positive. Uh, people either they love it or they say, Hey, it looks like a cool idea, but I'm not into a wave feature. So, and every once in a while, some people get pissed off that I, uh, that I bother them, but oh well. Oh man. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the nature of the internet, you know? <laughs> you yeah. can't... How did, how did you hear of it? How did I hear of it? I heard of it. It was either EDC, EDC Gear Review. I think it was EDC Gear Reviews. Um, he's a guy I've been following for a long time. He used to be Guns and Knives Reviews, like something like that. But he's a great dude out of Idaho. And, and he got it. And um, Cutlery Lover and a couple of big YouTube reviewers got it kind of simultaneously. And I was like, wait a second. You know, like, you know, I'm a Cold Steel um, devotee, like from the very... You know, I like to, I, I've become a bit of a snob since I started collecting knives and now cold steels are, are, are awesome and great. But I, I also have some other fancier knives, but, but my heart is, uh, you know, resides with cold steel. I like, I like the, um, I like that they're purpose built. They're unapologetically weapons, uh, yeah. most of the time, you know, and they, and they make some EDC stuff, uh, that you wouldn't press into that. But I like that they are straightforward about it. And, um, because, I, I lived in New York for 13 years, just over the river from you. And as you know, you know, you're, you, you have very little in the way of rights to defend yourself. So I learned martial yeah. arts and I carried a pocket knife. And, um, so that, that kind of always stuck with me. So yeah, uh, this pricked up my ears big time when I saw, when I saw, um, can't remember his name, but the guy in EDC gear reviews, uh, pulled this out. So I would say, you know, that was a leading question. I would say social media has been. Uh, where I've seen you exclusively, I think um, Blade Forums is also a great idea for you because I go on there all the time. It's uh, I too have a have a a job that's somewhat automated. I I produce television and video stuff, and when that stuff is rendering, it's like your CNC building stuff. When when the computer's building stuff, I tell it to build. I can also go on you know online, and I go on Blade Forums, and that's where the knife trading and knife buying happens because. <laughs> There are other like-minded, you know, junkies like me selling this stuff. And, you know, you can buy a brand new knife for a song there. But the fact that they, uh, they have maker pages and you could have your own forum there. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Um, forum. It really is. So we'll be joining probably this year. So, uh, what kind of, um, you say you're not a knife guy, but I would imagine, um, working on the Snaggletooth MF. I, I bet it's probably pushed you towards being more of a knife guy in any case. Yeah, absolutely. How do you perceive the knife world, the knife community, uh, which I, I think has really grown, you know, in the, in the age of the internet. But, you know, what, what do you think of the community? Actually, I, I never would have imagined it was so big. And for the most part, it's been fantastic. We've, 
we did a show in Pennsylvania uh, last May or April, and it was, it was fantastic. All these guys who make their own custom knives are there, then the big guys are there. And we were very well received. People loved the idea. Uh, like me, there was many people who really didn't know that much about pocket knives, and they're there just just looking. They can't. They carry a small buck knife, and then when they see someone pulling a knife out, already you know, ready to defend yourself or whatever, open a box or right. cut some twine, they were uh, they were taken back, much like I was. Uh, you know, it really is a huge world that I didn't know existed, and it's great. And I see a a real need to carry a knife every day, besides self defense, uh, just using it every day. I, I hike every day. I try to hike. I, you know, I have a knife with me every day and, uh, it's great. It's, uh, it opened my eyes a lot and the people are fantastic so far. Everyone's been very supportive. There's a show on history channel called Forged in Fire. You may be familiar mm-hmm. with. Yes. You know, and I don't know if you've ever watched any other reality competition show ever on television, but the contestants are always uh, backstabbing horrible people except when you turn on Forged in Fire and you see four guys trying to make a knife and they're all helping each other out and saying, oh yeah, I deserve to lose. That other guy was much better than me. You know, it, it, I know it's just a TV show, but it's kind of emblematic of like how humble and cool most people in this, uh, in this knife world are. Um, it's just a, a bunch of enthusiasts gathered around and, and, you know, the first tool ever created. Yeah, it's a different breed. I mean, it, it probably has a little bit to do with working class people. They're a little... A little more, you know, salt of the earth, a little more humble, uh, which I like. You know, that's those are people I want to deal with. I'm a working class guy. You're a working class guy. Well, in contrast to that, uh, we just spoke uh, a couple weeks ago with Dr. Frunky, who's a who's a knife connoisseur on YouTube. He does knife reviews of some really, um, you know, I've kind of watched his taste grow pretty quickly over the past few years from your average pocket knife that you can pick up to super high end fancy stuff. And, uh, you know, we were talking and he was, he was saying that he got into it first, like many people thinking it was self-defense and then, and then fell in love with just the materials and, and the build of it. And, and, uh, you know, but here's this, uh, you know, he's a neurosurgeon and yet he has this fascination with the, uh, with the blade. Maybe it's cause he uses them on a daily basis to open up people's, you know, back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you can meet a lot of very interesting people across across the board. So what do you what do you see in the future for Snaggletooth Tactical as a as a company? We have a new product that's going to be released soon. It's going to be for the Cold Seal Recon 1. As soon as I get final uh I've machined prototypes, now I have to actually build fixtures and go into a small production run, test it out, make sure it's flawless, and then uh Get you one, get a couple other guys a few, um, and then start selling them. Nice, nice. Uh, I, I am smiling. No one can can see that, but I'm very happy about that. But I, I assume you're keeping it under your hat. Uh, right now I am. Right now. I did um, reach out to uh, Jimmy Slash on YouTube. Are you familiar oh, with that? Oh, yes, I am. I love Jimmy Slash, yeah. So over the summer, I sent him a unfinished one. It was just aluminum. Uh-huh. The material is aluminum. And he liked it. I want to just get his uh, his feedback to see if the fit was right and how yeah. to feel. And he uh, he loved it. I told him I'd have him one in about a month or two. And here we are five, six months later. And, you know, unfortunately, I've been busy at work, but uh, we're close now. Yeah, life, life steps in. It's funny you mentioned Jimmy Slash because he actually was one of the very first guys that I saw with the Snaggletooth MF. And actually, uh, he inspired – he's inspired me to buy – to pick back up on my cold steel, large cold steel habit, um, cause he's got a one also a cold steel habit. But after seeing his video, I decided instead of just getting one, I got the three pack of the <laughs> Snaggletooth MF and I put, uh, I put one on, you can see this, the, the audience cannot see this, but it's a massive, uh, Lynn Thompson edition Voyager with the serrations and everything. And this is like, you know, you're gonna get you're gonna get in a you know in a in a in a fight with an entire bar full of bikers. This is the knife you want, and that's how you want to open it. So, uh, any anything else on the horizon for Snaggletooth we should know about? Well, um, today I just saw a review by Gun Toten Minnesota Minnesotan. He did just did a review, a great review on us. He's on YouTube. Uh, if 
you guys want to check it out, it's, uh, it was a very nice complimentary review. Uh, we did get approached by a, I don't know if I'm going to mention his name because I don't know if he wants me to. He, uh, he just contacted me that he never heard of this and he's a knife guy and he has 500,000 viewers on YouTube. If I could send some samples. So they should arrive tomorrow for him to start examining. Oh. And by, by the, um, response I've had from everyone else, I, I'm sure will be positive. Oh, wow. Jeez. 500,000 views. My only, my only guess is nothing fancy, but you don't have to say anything here. <laughs> I don't know his name. I have to, I know his Instagram tag, but I don't know his, uh, YouTube. But, uh, it was, um, he's from Pennsylvania. That's, oh. I know that. So, uh, so that's that's fantastic, and then Cold Steel did a little storyline on their Instagram. That was really that, they contacted me, and they asked for some samples. I sent it to them, and the night the kid got the samples, he put up a storyline. That is stellar. Yeah, I, and they're gonna get they're gonna get one of the new products for the recon as soon as I get them made. And um, if it works for a recon, then that opens up the doors for a lot of different uh, knives in the cold, especially in the Cold Steel collection. Right. So have you, uh, do you have a way of, or uh, have you thought of a way of making a, um, a snaggletooth MF for, um, knives who's, that, that have the compression fit, um, what do you call it? Uh, the thumb studs that don't unscrew. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do you have a way of attaching a snaggletooth on top of a, of a pressure fit thumb stud? Is that something you would pursue? Uh, I'm not sure. What do you mean pressure fit? The ones that don't unscrew that are just forced right. together? Yeah. Um, we, I don't, I never really saw any of those knives. I'll be honest. Every knife I've met, I've been able to remove the thumb studs and they all had holes in them. Got to, Yeah. So if you could email me a list of knives that are pressure fitted, I could buy one and test it. Yeah. Not even, probably not even worth it. No. So how, how many, <laughs> no, how many of these things can you make at once? I mean, what's, uh, when you're, when you're on full steam production, what are you churning out? Well, the injection mold will mold, um, eight righties and one lefty. That is our hmm. ratio because apparently I, I did the research online and I, I think that was the ratio of lefties to righties in the world. So I was like, all right, we'll go with science. And it's worked <laughs> pretty much spot on. I mean, some guys do like to, they're righties, but they like to carry left because um, one guy is a police officer and his, his sidearm is on his right and he wants a knife in case someone reaches for his gun. He could reach for his knife in his left pocket and fend them off. So there's, you know, there's little discrepancies there, but for the most part, the numbers are spot on. Well, incidentally, uh, the Snaggletooth MF works perfectly on both sides, at least, uh, waving it. And, and actually the, the off side, the non nut thumb side, the screw side, I guess of it, mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, works as a, a very comfortable way of opening it like thumb stud. Yep. Um, as a matter of fact, I find it more comfortable than the nut. The nut itself is a little sharp and, um, I have very, very delicate thumbs, you see. And, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but with the, uh, only with the broken skull does it feel uncomfortable because the broken skull's thumb stud is so close to the, uh, pivot. It's, it's already a difficult, um, yep. more difficult knife to, to roll out with the thumb stud. You add the little sharpness of the nut. It's ever so slightly, uh, less comfortable. But on my two other knives, I, my car knife is a, uh, is a, um, four inch Tanto Voyager. And that also has the snaggle tooth on it. The thinking behind that is say I'm driving somewhere and I've forgotten my regular knife and then some, something comes up and I have to like, I have to go in on a mission, right? I'm going to have to grab whatever I have in my car. Well, I'm not going to take the, the case sod buster muffin knife for cutting my daughter's muffins in half. I'm going to grab the cold steel with it so I can wave it out and, and, you know, cause mayhem if necessary. <laughs> Chances are that doesn't come up, but I'm ready. Hopefully it never has to come up, but you have to be ready. Well, if it does, you better believe I'm going to do at least a 30 minute podcast. <laughs> on it. So, uh, Rob, just winding up here, you know, the, the only two things I didn't want this to be an utterly fawning interview where I'm just gushing about how much I love this, but I pretty much do. And, and I've already voiced the two things I would have said. Um, I, like everyone else, had the jimping thought, but, uh, it was a passing thought because it doesn't, it's not necessary. Um, and then the other thing was the, was the, uh, just the sharp corners on the nut. Other than that, I mean, this thing is awesome. And what I've been highlighting in, um, in my purchasing lately and on this, uh, podcast and in a couple of the videos I've been making are 
I'm I'm liking showing off small American businesses like yours, cottage businesses that are actually servicing the uh, the knife world with with something valuable, something that's needed. It's not just a, a you know a different colored pivot screw. It's it's actually a an innovation, and uh, I just think uh, I just think it's great, and I look forward to more products coming out from you and Snaggletooth Tactical. Yeah, no, we really appreciate this uh, exposure. It's great. Um, you know, you contacted us. Several people contacted us. All of a sudden, it's it's been pretty good exposure wise. So I'm hoping it keeps up, and we get our new products out, and we keep you know we keep pumping them out and keeping people happy. Well, yeah. I mean, if I could do this full time, that'd be awesome. <laughs> That's the goal. And we, when you're doing it full time, and I'm doing it full time, we'll get back together. We'll talk about how awesome it is. Definitely, absolutely. We really appreciate this opportunity. Well, Rob Penna from Snaggletooth Tactical, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And even more than that, it's been a pleasure carrying your product in my pocket every day. I totally stand by it. And, uh, you know, I think it's just another great little innovation that will build many more. So thanks for coming on the show. All right. Great, man. Thank you for having us and uh, have a good night. All right. You too, man. Take care. Take care. Follow The Knife Junkie on Instagram at thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram. Bob, great interview. I love Rob. I, I, I know you love his product, but just a, such a down-to-earth guy. And again, uh, an American-made company, you know, building it on his kitchen table. Got to gotta love that story. Yeah, I love that. I find such inspiration from those kind of uh, stories. People, people having an idea, having a passion, and uh, not psyching themselves out with the difficulties, but just sitting down at the kitchen table and uh, putting themselves to work. I love that because it gives me hope that someday uh, my ventures, my kitchen table ventures will take off. Right. So uh, yeah, Rob Penna, salt, salt of the earth uh, out of New Jersey with a great product. Yeah. And what a great guy. And he's got some uh, great news for listeners of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, we're going to be getting some samples to give away. But if you can't wait for a sample or you're not uh, fortunate enough to win one when we, when we give them away, he's uh, worked out a great deal for listeners of the Knife Junkie podcast. You can get 20% off any purchase at uh, snaggletoothmf.com. All you have to do is enter the coupon code KJ, which stands for Knife Junkie. Knife Junkie. Yeah. Coupon code KJ and get 20% off any purchase. Just go to snaggletoothmf.com. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. Call the Knife Junkie at 724-466-4487 with your questions or comments. Bob, got to mention a couple of shows. We uh, have been kind of uh, neglectful, I guess, or forgetful and mentioning our knife calendar that's on the website, the knifejunkie.com slash calendar. But a couple of big shows coming up, actually, uh, this coming weekend, February 15th and 16th, that's Friday and Saturday, Arkansas. Got a big uh, Arkansas knife show. It's going to be at the State House Convention Center. So that's uh, one coming up this weekend. Also, uh, the Keystone Blade Association knife show is going to be February 23rd and 24th. Spirit of the Blade Custom Knife Show at the Miami County Fairgrounds, March 1 and 2. And then uh, March 2nd, California Knife Makers Association 2019 Spring Custom Knife Show. Uh, so those are just three or four of the uh, events featured on the knifejunkie.com slash calendar that uh, you can check out, keep up to date with all the uh, knife shows going on around the country. And if you uh, are involved in a knife show, promote a knife show, your knife uh, uh, club uh, puts on a knife show, please uh, enter it uh, on the uh, uh, knifejunkie.com website and get your uh, uh, show listed on our calendar. Again, the knifejunkie.com slash calendar. Jim, I'm sitting here as you read those uh, dates and I'm thinking, boy, I really am a junkie because I want to go to every one of those shows <laughs> and probably want to buy most of the knives at them. So uh, it's a problem. If any of you live out near any of those spots, go check it out. Go support your local knife makers. Go check them out. Take some pictures and send to them, send to us and let us know how it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let us drool. That's right. Until next time, folks, I uh, want to thank you for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and we'll uh, catch you next week. Have a great one. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.